So I've been doing this YouTube thing since June and I think it's time that you guys learn a little bit more about me. So in today's video, I'm going to be answering your frequently asked questions. So I did ask you guys both on my YouTube community page as well as my Discord server, what your questions you had for me were. And I got a ton of really great questions, so I'm excited to answer them today. So sit back, grab something cozy to drink, grab your favorite snack, and let's just talk about crochet and art and things. I'm gonna go ahead and start with all of the questions that were posted on my YouTube community page. The first one we have, how do you deal with burnout? I move on to another hobby or another craft. It is no secret, I love all kinds of different crafts. So if I'm feeling like I'm just burnt out on crocheting or I'm feeling overwhelmed or any of those things, I'll pick up some of my other hobbies that I like to do such as cross stitching, sewing, artwork, or I'll even pull out a cozy game or two. I do find every few months, if I'm feeling burnt out, I have a span where I do a lot of cozy gaming. Currently, I've been playing a lot of Bandle Tale as well as Moonstone Island, and it's just really nice to not have to focus so much on making or producing items and just really focus on me and my time. It is hard though when you do feel burnt out, but you actually have to get things done because they're a commission, you need to get paid for a certain type of deals or things, that can get very overwhelming. So in those situations, what I'll do is I will heavily focus on that project that needs to be complete and I will do my best to complete it before I do anything else. And while completing that project, I start to really focus on what my next project will be and it needs to be something for me. If I'm feeling overwhelmed because of a commission, if I'm feeling overwhelmed because I have a deadline, I work really hard to meet those deadlines. But in the back of my mind, I know, okay, after this is done, I'm gonna crochet one of my favorite things to crochet, or I'm gonna play a game, or I'm gonna go ahead and have a fun afternoon with my family that kind of thing, just looking forward to something personally for me, something that excites me, and that kind of helps push me through the burnout, but getting projects done that needs to get done. Are you a multiple whips kind of person or do you stick to one project at a time? I am a multiple whips person. I cannot do one project at a time, I would go insane. <laughs> I like to change things up. That's why I like amigurumi so much is because I don't like the same thing over and over and over. I do like to mix it up. So I do usually have multiple whips at a time. If I get anywhere close to 10 whips, that's when I tell myself, whoa, okay, Sonnet, you need to reel it back in. You're getting a little too overboard. We need to finish some of these before we start any new ones. I would say my typical amount of whips that I have going at a time is usually between four and five. It's the perfect number for me to where I don't feel like the project I'm working on is getting stale, but then I don't get too overwhelmed with the amount of whips that I have going. Choose one set, the Pikapau books or iconic women books. When it comes to the style of amigurumi, how the amigurumi are constructed, just the characters themselves. It has to be the Pika Pau just because they are so iconic and sweet and cute. I love the patterns. I love Jan Schenkel. Oh my gosh, I love them. However, when it comes to projects that are really special and important to me, it's definitely the iconic women. I do love how those patterns are written. I do love how quickly they work up. And what's most important is I do use them as a way to educate myself on iconic women and important women in our history, but also it's a great learning tool for my kiddo. And I do want to raise her to be a strong, powerful and proud woman. So those ones I think probably are the number one answer just because of how special they are and their meaning. Do you have a favorite pattern designer? So there's gonna be two for this one. The first one is gonna be Nature a Crochet. As far as style, and color palettes and uniqueness and just super fun characters. I love 
everything Natura Crochet does. I wish she would come out with another book. I do have the Aquatic Amigurumi and I love every single one of those patterns. And I have so many of her patterns that I have downloaded from Etsy. They're just so great. But also Lauren Espy. I love Lauren Espy's patterns. I think she is a fantastic designer for beginners, intermediate and advanced crocheters. I love that I can whip up one of her adorable little cute foodies from Crochet Cafe. The crocheted foods are my number one seller at my craft markets, so that's always fun. But also all of her animal patterns and other kind of random patterns that she has in her Whimsical Stitches book, as well as her mini set that she has. She has a PDF collection of 100 minis. There's three of them, so it's overall 300 minis that I love. They're great for keychains, they're great for my craft fairs, and they're just really fun and well-written mini patterns. I just love her so much. I think she is absolutely incredible, an incredible designer. Her designs are so well loved by so many that she's also at the top for me. What is one project you don't have any interest in making? A temperature blanket for sure. Um, I am doing my book blanket, which is kind of similar, but as far as like a temperature blanket goes, I think they are great and I understand why they are so popular. But personally for me, I just, it's not my thing. I'm really not into blankets in general, but especially one that tracks every day of the year. I know there are variations and you don't have to do it that way, but at this time, a temperature blanket is not on my crochet to-do list, but you never know what that may change in the future. What project or pattern could you make over and over again without getting bored? The mushy pop. <laughs> You guys know I've been obsessed with the pops from Cable and Canvas, more specifically the Mushy Pop. I love this thing. I think it is so cute. I have made so many already and I can't wait to make more. I love how fast they work up. I love that I could change the colors if I'm getting bored with it. I think the Mushy Pop would be the answer for that question for sure. Best tip you have for anybody venturing into the wonderful world of crochet? I have two. So the very first one, when it comes to crochet, crochet is a skill just like any other skill. If you were to pick up an instrument, if you were to start playing a sport, you are going to have to learn and build up your skills before you can start to see progress or start to be good at it. And crochet is no different. You won't just pick up a hook and some yarn and expect to make these really crazy, wonderful amigurumis right out the gate. There is a lot of muscle memory that goes into learning to crochet. And there is a lot of learning, not just tips and tricks, but just the basic foundations of crochet, chaining, working in rows, working in spirals, the different stitches, knowing the conversion between US and UK crochet. There is a lot to learn. And so just like if you were to pick up a guitar, you would start from the very bottom, but you just keep practicing, you keep playing, and eventually you get to where you wanna be. But my biggest tip for anyone getting into crochet, you have to take breaks throughout your day. Take it from someone who didn't take it seriously. I am not joking when I say I have had more crochet related injuries in the past three years of my life than in my entire life doing anything else. I have never had so many injuries as when I started crocheting and that is because I would crochet for extended periods of time. I would have awful posture and I wouldn't be taking breaks and treating my body correctly. So if you are just starting with crocheting, it is not something that you can do for eight hours in a day nonstop without seeing issues. You need to take breaks, you need to stretch, and most importantly, you need to watch your posture. I've had so many back injuries because I will slouch or I will lean or I'm just not supporting my body the way it should while crocheting and then those muscles and tendons and things get strained because of the repetitive motion of crocheting. Take breaks. Take breaks, take breaks, take breaks, and sit up straight. A simple question, but do you use worsted weight yarn for the amigurumi that calls for thinner weight yarn? Absolutely. I would say mm, 
seven times out of 10, I am using worsted weight. Sometimes I do want to make the project with the intended yarn because I don't want it to be gigantuan, or a lot of times I am making, say, keychains and things which needs to be made with thinner yarn so they don't turn out too big. And really the only other exception is if I'm making like a garment or something, and that's because I need to match the gauge. So of course I will use the intended weight of yarn. What other crochet amigurumi books are on your wish list? That is a great question. I do have a lot actually. I would say the one that's been on my wish list for the longest is Amigurumi Treasures by Irina Lee. I do have Amigurumi Treasures too, and I love that book. I love Arena Lee's patterns, but I just have never picked up the first one. I could go on and on, but I'm gonna go ahead and just give you a couple more examples. Another one that is on my wish list is the Pokemon book. That is the book that I first saw on Amazon that intrigued me into the world of Amigurumi and crochet and why I learned to crochet in the first place. That way I could make the things in that book. However, when I taught myself how to crochet, I hadn't bought the book yet because I wanted to learn to crochet before I purchased it. And then I just never got around to it. Even though I do hear mixed things on the Pokemon book, I do want to add it to my collection because it is the one that started all of this. <laughs> and lastly is the Unicorn, Dragons, and More book number two. I believe so. there's actually three of these, but let's start off slow. Let's go ahead and add the second book to my collection. I do have the first book and I have kind of mixed feelings on that book, but I would still love to get the second one to add to my collection because it is full of so many wonderful designers and I'm sure there's some really cute patterns in there that I would love to make. What has been your least favorite thing you have ever made? Can be crochet or other hobby. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep this as vague as I possibly can <laughs> um, to not upset anybody um, when it comes to this project. But at the time of this project, I was doing a lot of artwork and I was doing a lot of artwork commissions for people. And this client that came to me for this piece of artwork was just, really difficult to work with. Um, at the time, I didn't have a contract when it came to my art commissions, which was dumb. I know I was very new to all of it, but because of this particular client, I actually ended up having to make a contract. The amount of changes that they asked for, the amount of things that they wanted done, was just unrealistic. If you are commissioning somebody to make artwork for you, look at their portfolio, see if there is style, see if what they do matches what you have going on in your head, because if it's not, it might not turn out how you're expecting. What is your least favorite craft that you have tried? I would have to say resin. There was a time a couple years ago where I really got into the idea of making resin things to sell at my craft fairs and I am a very cautious person. And so when I then was looking on YouTube and I saw all of the videos about the dangers of working with resin, I got a little paranoid. So I had the gloves, I had the full kind of apron to protect my clothes and my skin. I did wear a respirator mask as well when working with resin. And it was something that I only worked in my garage because I had a two year old at the time and I did not feel like mixing up resin in my house with a two year old that was around. My neighbors probably thought it was a Breaking Bad situation in my garage because of how <laughs> I looked. Uh, and it was just very frustrating for me. I could only do it in the summertime because I needed the warmth of the days. And plus I was doing it in my garage and I had to make sure the garage door was open. I was only able to do it at night once my kiddo had gone to sleep, which made my husband a little uneasy. He didn't like me just hanging out in the garage at 11 p.m. at night. So I did that for about a summer and all of the issues I was having with my resin molds and things, it just wasn't for me. What is your favorite creation? So I don't have it anymore, but favorite of all time has to be my Hocus Pocus book. I created this, I would say maybe in 2009. At the time I was teaching card making and scrapbooking classes and I was really into the all of the Tim Holtz line of things. And he had these really cool inks um, as well as his like um, ink pads and things that I used to 
transform a ordinary dictionary into the book from Hocus Pocus. I used a lot of polymer clay for this as well and it turned out great. At the time I did have a black cat and he looked perfect next to my Hocus Pocus book. You were able to open up the book and there were Winifred's spells inside the book. I loved that thing so much. After some time, it did kind of fall apart, which is unfortunate, but eh, whatever. I would say that's probably my favorite thing I ever made. As far as crochet, I really loved my Benedict the Shrew that I made. He was sold and he did go to a very happy home. I was sad when he left though. I loved making Benedict and I probably will make another one, but also I think one of my other favorites is my Oogie Boogie. This is called the Grubby Buddy by Twisted Hatter and it is no surprise, I, uh, love Oogie Boogie. <laughs> so he is definitely one of those Amis that I just love him so much. I want to make more. I have a video actually planned where I make a ton of Oogie Boogie stuff and I'm really excited for that video. That's going to be coming in a couple of months so keep an eye out for that one. But yeah, my Oogie is definitely one that I will cherish forever. What is your dream job? Okay. <laughs> This is gonna be so silly. I have two. The first one is I want to write and illustrate children's books. I would love to write and illustrate my own children's book and I know it's not as difficult as I imagine it to be. It is still one of those projects that is very overwhelming to me but I do feel like in the next couple of years I might start really working hard to do that. Um, it's easier than ever now to self-publish, but I do want it to be more than just a book I throw up on KDP, um, which is Kindle Direct Publishing. I want it to be something a little bit more than that. So that is my overall goal, I think, to illustrate a book and write the book, because yeah. But my other dream, dream job, don't laugh at me, I would love to work at Disneyland. <laughs> I would love to work at Disneyland. I love it so much. And I just picture myself, more specifically, if you've ever been to Disneyland, they have something called um, the Storybook um, Canal Boats. And it's where you sit on the little boat, you direct it around the pond, and you tell everybody all of the adorable little fairy tales of the charming little miniature uh, scenes and houses that you see as you go around this little canal. And it's so cute. It's so sweet. And I just, I've always pictured myself in the cute little dress sitting on the boat telling everybody all of these fairy tales. <laughs> Those were all the questions from YouTube. Now let's go ahead and jump over to all of our questions from Discord. Now that you have been doing them a while, which crochet project would you most like to go back and do again, assuming you had the time, energy, materials to do so? So I kind of touched on this a little bit when I was talking about my favorite projects, but I would love to do another Benedict the Shrew. I think um, I would love to make another one, one that I do keep for myself because I really love that pattern. And there are a couple of Pika Pow and Iconic Women characters that I have actually gifted that I would like to do again for my collection. I made a Pedro Vandito pig, but I did gift him to some family. And I would love to remake my RBG and my Jane Austen. RBG was gifted to a dear friend that just loved her. And Jane Austen was actually gifted to our children's librarian who loves Jane Austen books. Uh, so I think I would like to remake them again to have them in my collection. What is my least favorite crochet project? So that was actually a mini doll that I started to make. I don't have her anymore. I got rid of her. I thought this pattern was going to be really fun. I was going to make her to look like me. She had the Betty bangs and everything. It was really cute. This was a couple of years ago, but this Project does use real doll hair, which I thought was really fun, but the pattern just left a lot to be desired. Maybe it was because I was so new at crochet at the time, because this was a couple years ago. Maybe if I were to give her a go, it would be a little bit better this time, but she just didn't turn out right. I tried to give her winged eyeliner and it turned out awful. The hair, I was just unable to attach the doll hair. And I believe there was like a little bit of instruction on how to 
put the hair on, but nothing that was really working for me. So I don't know. I might go back and look at this pattern again. I do have a couple of other patterns from this designer that I could maybe try, but I was so frustrated, I gave up, I threw her away. I was not having fun. I would also love to know your favorite and least favorite digital art too. So my least favorite digital art is definitely the commission that I was talking about earlier. We're not gonna go any more into it. Yuck. My favorite artwork that I have done, I'm gonna have to say my Pennywise that I made. I do one illustration a year where I illustrate a horror villain in a more cutesy type of style. And this was the one a couple years ago, and I think he turned out the best. Pennywise is one of my least favorite villains though. I feel very uncomfortable watching those movies. Yucky. Um, <laughs> so even though I do make the really cute artworks for them, I am not a horror person anymore. I used to be. But then, you know, you get married, you have a kid, and all of a sudden you just, just become a big wimp. At least I did. So uh, I don't do scary things anymore, but I love to do those. And the Pennywise is my favorite. If I wanted to start making Amis, what are the bare bone essential supplies I should pick up? Hook sizes, yarn types, etc. There has been some debate online about what type of yarn to use when first starting out. So take all of my advice with a grain of salt. This is just personally how I feel, but you might get some other recommendations for others. Personally, for me, I would recommend starting off with a worsted weight acrylic yarn. This is some relatively inexpensive yarn and you can find a big skein of it for a relatively low price. I feel using a worsted weight acrylic is the easiest way to see your stitches and you're not investing in a really expensive ball of yarn that you might not use if you end up you hate crocheting. If you are using a worsted weight acrylic, I would recommend using a four millimeter crochet hook to start off with. Personally for me, I use a three millimeter, but four millimeter is a good starting point. So some other necessary items you're gonna need for amigurumi are stuffing, and scissors. Any old scissors will do fine, but the sharper the better because if you're cutting yarn with some dull scissors, it starts fraying and it's no fun. You're also gonna need some polyfill or stuffing. They do have a lot of different options in various craft stores. You can get them at Walmart, Michaels, Joanne. You can find this stuff everywhere. So just some stuffing to stuff your Amis. You will also need a needle to sew in your end. This is a needle that has a bent tip. A lot of people love to use these because you can then get into the stitches and that's to close up your crocheted piece and also sew on any limbs or things that you need to sew on. So a needle is definitely a must. And personally, I recommend metal ones. They do sell a lot of plastic ones, but I find that the plastic ones always bend and break on me. So I do like to use metal ones. And lastly, you're gonna need some eyes. Now, most amigurumi use things called safety eyes, which is the eye and then it has the little stem on there, but you don't necessarily need safety eyes for amigurumi. You could use buttons if you'd like, beads, or if you really want, you can embroider the eyes as well with some extra yarn or embroidery floss. But those are the absolutely necessary items you would need to make an Ami. You need your yarn, your hook, some scissors, some stuffing, eyes, and then something to sew up your piece. Now, if you wanna make your life really easy, I would also recommend getting a stitch marker of some kind. That's gonna help keep your place because most Amis are worked in a spiral. And if you lose count, you can lose what row you're on, which can be really, infuriating. If you could go back and read a book again for the first time, so it was all brand new to you again, which book or series would it be? The Vampires of El Norte. It's no secret I loved this book. And this next one is kind of a little weird because uh, you wouldn't expect this answer, but probably Ready Player One as well. So I read this one, gosh, 
before the movie came out for sure. And I just remember flying through this one and having so much fun with it. And I would love to feel that kind of excitement again. What do you like most about making content on Twitch? I love having just real time conversations with people. I feel like I don't do great at social media like Instagram and things because I just feel so disconnected from people. But whenever I get a chance to actually physically talk to somebody, whether it's at a craft market or on a live stream, I just have so much fun. We don't just talk about crochet. We don't just ask questions and answer crochet related things. We talk about all kinds of things. And it's a really nice way for twice a week, I get together with my crochet and non crochet friends and we just sit, we have a conversation, we work on projects together. And it's kind of like having a little crochet group, just not in person, but over the internet. So I feel like YouTube is different than Twitch. I just love talking about the things that I love. I love sharing my passions with the world. And YouTube gives me that opportunity to be able to shout it from a mountaintop that, hey, look what I made. I had a fun time with this or look what I read. I loved it. It's just, it's so nice. It's just a way for me to just get what I love out there, talk about the things I love and share my passions with the whole entire world. You have a very cutesy stylized drawing style. How did you develop that style and what type of art artists inspire you? So I do have a very cartoony style and it's no surprise, it's because of my love of Disney. I am highly inspired by so many iconic Disney animators, especially the Nine Old Men. If you're not familiar, the Nine Old Men are the original animators that started working with Walt Disney and helped produce some of those iconic films that we know and love today, such as Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, Pinocchio, Bambi, all of them. I'm also highly inspired by Mary Blair. I think Mary Blair was so wonderful. I love how stylized her things are. I love her choice of colors and I just love the whimsy of all of her designs. And I'm also really inspired by Disney Imagineers. My all time favorite is Rolly Crump and Rolly Crump was a Disney animator, but he is also known for all of his Imagineering duties that he did. He helped design the Tower of the Four Winds for the World Fair in 1964. He also helped Mary Blair with the iconic facade of It's a Small World. And he was a huge inspiration to a lot of the artwork and art style behind the Haunted Mansion, which at that time was known as the Museum of the Weird. And lastly, when it comes to modern artists that really inspire me, again, we're going in with some heavily Disney art and that is Jared Maruyama. I love him so much. He is just, mm. His artwork is just so cute. And I love that his style is very iconic. You probably see his artwork everywhere, but you don't realize it until you learn about him as an artist. And then you'll start seeing it everywhere. You see the Target gift cards, you see the Disney books that have his artwork. I even have wrapping paper and I refuse to use it because it's just too cute. <laughs> you have a lot of hobbies. How do you prioritize your projects? What hobby do you tend to gravitate to most? It's no surprise the hobby I gravitate to the most is crochet. Um, as far as prioritizing my projects, I really have to focus on ones that need to be done, whether they're commissions or they're for, you know, deals or things like that. Those are the ones that take the most precedence in my book. Also, if I am working on a YouTube video that requires a crochet project, those are pretty high up on my list. I do also try and produce at least one piece of artwork a month that I can then transform into a physical good such as a notebook or such as say apparel or stickers or things like that. And I do that that way I can sell them at my craft markets and on my website. As far as all the other hobbies that I have, the sewing, the miniature buildings, the painting, all of that stuff, a lot of those are hobbies that I will then pick up to satisfy my urge to create. Uh, but when I don't feel like crocheting or doing artwork, I am the kind of person where I can't just sit and do nothing. I have to constantly be making something. Maybe it's a bad thing, I don't know. But if I'm just sitting there watching TV, in my mind, I feel like I'm wasting time and that I could be making something really cool, such as a crocheted piece or a piece of artwork. 
So a lot of times if I am having downtime when I'm just hanging out with my family or I don't have any projects that need to get done right now, I then work on mostly crochet or artwork pieces personally for me. Do you find YouTube algorithms of constantly needing to upload stressful? Art and larger crochet projects definitely take time, but having a social media presence is like the opposite. Like everything has to be fast and consistent, 100%. Not so much with YouTube, but with places like Instagram and things, I do find the need to be constantly pumping out content. So this year I'm going to be working really hard to actually be reposting images and projects that I have already completed and that I have already posted just to keep up with the ever demanding need to post something on the social media. So there's a good chance you're going to be seeing multiple photos of projects this year, projects I probably haven't worked on in years, but that is because I am in that need of just getting my name and my Instagram page just out there into the algorithm world. And the last question we have for today, what is the approximate miles of yarn you use in a year? 1,760 yards equals one mile. So I'm gonna need to do a little bit of math here and it's not gonna be perfect, but it'll be an estimate of how many miles of yarn I use in a year. So this is the yarn that I typically like to use when crocheting and that is the I Love This Cotton. There is approximately 180 yards in this skein of yarn. Now, most of my crochet pieces use multiple colors of yarn, but if I were to just make one of my normal sized amigurumi in just one color, I bet I would use about one skein per amigurumi. So this is how I'm going to do the math. I'm going to say more or less one skein of yarn equals one amigurumi. Obviously there's variations. Some that are smaller use less, but some that are larger use more. So we're just averaging it out so that one skein, one amigurumi. Now each month I crochet roughly 15 amigurumi. So we're gonna go ahead and do 15 times 180, which means I use 2,700 yards of yarn per month. Times that by 12, which equals 32,400 yards. Now we're gonna go ahead and divide that by 1760 which equals roughly 18 miles. Again, this is all very estimated math. It could be way less than that. It could be way more than that. I have a feeling it's way more than that, but yeah, roughly 18 miles. <laughs> But that's it for the questions. Thank you so much to everyone that submitted a question for my FAQ video. I really appreciate everyone taking the time to submit your questions and to watch this video. I hope you learned a little bit more about me and why I create and what I like to create, but I love you so much. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you all a little later. Bye.